Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 28 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about os.listdir to read multiple files in Python. So this is similar to glob that I covered in the previous topic. It's in fact, uh, the functionality is almost exactly the same. But uh, let's jump into Spider to understand os.listdir a little bit better. And as usual, I'm going to use a few lines from my pre-written uh, Python file here. So let me go ahead and copy and paste these few lines and explain it. And again, os.list directory, again, it returns a list containing the names of the entries in the given path, which is exactly the same as glob, right? In the previous tutorial, we covered glob, where it returns a list containing the file names at whatever location we actually pointed it at. So it's very similar. So import OS instead of import glob and path is images slash test images. Again, exactly like my previous tutorial, I'm in, the, in this root directory and here we have images. Within images, we have test images, okay? So that's what we are pointing this at, images slash test images. Okay, now let's go ahead and print this so you can see what the output looks like. Okay, so when you do that, os.list directory, again, it's actually a list. Okay, so this is a list right here of all the file names, just like before. Now, again, anytime you have a list, you can iterate through the elements of list using a for loop and then do certain actions to each of these items. So what do we want to do here? Let's actually go ahead and print the name here. So for image in os.list there, let's go ahead and print the image, okay, for each element there. So it's just printing cell counting time series, 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. This is exactly the same as what we have done as part of our glob. You know, we go through each element as part of this uh, iterator, you know, as part of this list and then uh, uh, do certain action to each element there. So once you have the file names, then you can do anything, right? You can open this file, you can perform certain actions, and then you can save the file back to whatever specific location. So let's actually do a couple other things. Uh, so this is just OS. Uh, this is what I use most of the time, os.list directory. Okay, there are a couple of uh, variations. So one is uh, os.walk and os.walk, it's a, it's a, it returns a generator. In fact, let me copy this whole thing because there is certain text that I have written so I can convey to you. So here, let's go ahead and paste it. And uh, let me decrease the size a little. So os.walk, it returns a generator, which is not a list, it's just a generator that you can use to uh, uh, to apply on other uh, elements. Again, I'll, I'll explain what that is in a minute, okay? And uh, it creates a tuple. So when you actually do import OS and import uh, print OS.walk, uh, I'm not giving any path here. So it's going to walk from my current directory path. So again, when I print it, hopefully things make a bit more sense. So let's go ahead and print it. It creates a generator object, just like I mentioned earlier. So this does nothing other than creating a generator. Now let's actually take that generator and do something. So how do you do that? So for that, let's actually do for loop again. Again, anytime you have a few things, you know, to do to a uh, list, do that. Now, this is a generator. And from that generator, we are going to extract the root directory name, the directory names, and the file names, okay? So all it's doing is os.walk from the directory where I'm, wherever I'm sitting at, that's why I'm doing dot here. You can actually put any name here, images slash, for example, okay? Uh, then it goes into images subdirectory and then walks from there, or you can give full path, it doesn't matter. Right now I'm giving the path from wherever, the current working directory, that's what the dot means. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, do a couple of things. Uh, first, let's go ahead and print and see what happens when we do this. Okay, so the step number one, it creates a generator. And now from the generator, it extracts root and prints it out. So you can look at the output here. So the root is uh, uh, images and then images exported and images for alignment and so on. What does that mean? I'm in this folder. And then images is the one that it actually found. Within images, it found the exported folder, as you can see. 
for alignment folder, scratch essay folder, and test images. And then within images, it also found other code folder, which is its listing down here. So that's all the root is. Root is print all the root uh, directories. Now let's, uh, for the fun of it, let's go ahead and uh, 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 actually let's, let's continue this because the root slash slash images and slash exported, when you do root dot split, it splits at whatever that separator is. This is uh, uh, by using OS dot SEP. Okay, again, I'm just showing you a few tools that you can use to walk through your directories to find your files. Why is this useful? For example, in machine learning, you have a folder that contains all your training images, another folder that contains all your, uh, for example, labeled images. Okay, then you can say, okay, go into subfolder called train, find all the files, go to subfolder called uh, uh, labels, find all the uh, files, and then uh, match them up, for example. Okay, this is just one uh, thought. So how do you define that? Again, extract the path. How do you extract the path? By splitting the root, okay? And then let's go ahead and print this path if you want. Let's do this one more time. Uh, sorry, let's comment this part out because we understand what root means, okay? Let's run this one more time so it looks a bit clean. So this is what it's doing. It actually split at the separator. So previously we got like dot slash images now it actually separated that into dot, which is my current directory and images directory. Images directory and exported directory. Now I can basically say, hey, now get this exported and then go in there and then do something. Okay, so that's that's what the separator actually does. And now instead of uh, a separator, if you just uh, print the files, for example, let's run this one more time, just for the sake of completeness, you can see it's actually printing, printing all the files. And if I open this files a list, right there so these are all the files that it actually found uh, uh, you know at the last separator point uh, again please experiment uh, on your own uh, uh, directory structure so uh, let's do something fun let's actually finish it this off uh, by doing something fun so let me replace this by adding these two lines so all i'm doing here is again please go ahead and study this code look at the path and find out the length of this path and minus one and multiply that by three dashes. So if this value is two, you'll see six dashes there. If this value is, uh, 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 sorry, if this value is two, then you'll see three dashes. If this value is three, meaning if my depth is three, then uh, add six dashes. So let's run the code. Hopefully it makes sense. So this is exactly what I intended to print here, okay? There you go, three here, six here. And then in a way, this is giving me, let's go ahead and uh, decrease the size so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, okay? So uh, let's just pick one. So within my images directory, okay? Images directory, what do I have? So now to go into individual files, it has to go one step deeper, which means it's three minus one and multiplied by three dashes. So I should see six dashes here, okay? And why is it three? The length of the path, it has to travel uh, uh, at a depth of three, right? Initial subdirectory of images and then another uh, uh, subdirectory and then you have these files. So if I actually keep going down, you should see nine for some of these because these are part of another subdirectory called exported. Okay, so it uh, actually has nine of these uh, dashes here. So it's a quick snapshot of what files do I have in this directory structure. Okay, um, I think uh, we should spend a couple more minutes on one final topic here, which is another way to look at all of these directories. Yeah, again, I'm not sure which one you'll feel comfortable. Maybe all of these are uncomfortable to you because this is the first time you're probably looking at this code and trying to learn Python, which means spend a bit more time trying to understand uh, what we are trying to achieve here. Uh, like I said, initially, this can be a bit, uh, this can be a bit intimidating. Okay, so I was trying to, sorry, I was trying to copy these lines and then, uh, and then uh, run these lines here. So let's go ahead and do that. And why is it all commented? Because I have these comments over there. Okay, so another way to look at all these directories. What are we doing here? Again, uh, pretty much the same thing. We have for root, 
directories files in os.walk, which is exactly what we did, which means it's going to extract each time it walks through this, it extracts our roots, our directories and our files, okay? And for name in directories, now I put a nested for a loop, okay? For name in directories, okay? Go ahead and print this. And for name in files, or you can just say for file in files, it doesn't matter, I use the same variable, but for name in files, go ahead and print this, okay? We'll print all the paths of the files. So let's go ahead and print it. Uh, first of all, let's actually clear the screen. So we work with this clean slate on the right-hand side and let's go ahead and print it. So this is what it's printing here, okay? Uh, this is a 10 minute or 11 to 12 minute tutorial, but again, what it comes down to is this first line that I talk, started off with. If you know how to use this, then you're set for the most part. To do advanced topics, obviously it, it, it uh, helps to learn the other things too, but all you need to do is os.list directory of the path so you know uh, what the file names are. So uh, in the future tutorials, we will be applying, for example, uh, Gaussian blur or something else to an image, but then you want to apply that to a whole bunch of images. One way to do that is create a stack of images and then apply your function to the entire stack or point it to a folder of a whole bunch of images, which is exactly what I uh, was showing you. Okay, how to point it to a whole bunch of images. So I hope you found this tutorial to be very useful. And again, let's cover a different topic in the next one. Until then, please practice uh, both glob and os.list directory because these are very essential for automating your work uh, on, on multiple images. Thank you very much.